So you just built your new dream rig, fully spec'd out from GPU to CPU to RAM, and you are ready to throw down and enjoy all of those silky smooth frames and beautiful HDR color. There's just one problem. You forgot to get new cables. So you run over to Amazon and type in HDMI 2.1, trying to find some cables really quick. And you're met with this 8K, 16K, 10K. Listings from big name brands such as Zestkit or Capshe or JSOCKS, JSO, JSOUX? Some of these are as cheap as $5, some are over $40. Do you go with HDMI or do you go with DisplayPort? It is completely overwhelming. Well, no worries. We're here to kind of help you sort through that and figure out exactly what you need. So the first thing I'll tell you guys is buying expensive cables is completely worthless. Disagree? Let me know down in the comments. But the truth is, we tested tons of cables and all of these met the specs advertised on the box. So then what are you looking for? Now, the truth is we don't have 15 grand to drop on a total phase cable tester, but other channels have already done that for us. And I'll link those in the description. We basically came to the same conclusion that they did though, that the price of the cable doesn't really matter. What we did do is connect each one of these to a system and made sure that they tested for at least what they were rated for out of the box. With the exception of DisplayPort 2.1. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I don't have a 13K display to actually make sure it hit those numbers. But I can tell you that I was able to push the max for what our system was capable of with absolutely no issues. We looked for any issues that we were capable of finding from input lag to flickering display, artifacting, pretty much anything we could find and every single cable passed with flying colors. So that settles it, right? Just go on Amazon and buy the cheapest thing you can find. Well, not so fast. There's still three things you're gonna keep in mind when you're looking from my point of view. First is the quality of the connector. Next, you wanna look at the insulation and braiding in the jacket. And finally, price. We found the sweet spot between good quality and cheapness, if that's a word, to be somewhere around $2.50 a foot. So here we have a mix of HDMI cables, DisplayPort cables, USB-C, two DisplayPort, uh, pretty much anything since what you need will vary depending on your usage. Now, if you're trying to choose between DisplayPort and HDMI, that is a whole different topic that We'll tackle in a different video, but for this, we just wanted to look at quality to price. Now, every cable I'm going to show you here met our price criteria of falling in the $2.50 a foot range. So we're going to focus specifically on build quality of the connectors and what's inside the cable. Let's start by taking a look at the connectors. So you're going to see tons of different types. You'll have some with metal or aluminum plating, um, some that are plastic or rubber. You might see some with gold plating on the tips, some without it. That is completely useless and pretty much just a marketing tactic to drive up the price since this part of your cable has absolutely nothing to do with sending or receiving the signal. What I like to see on the connector is one, something a little bit longer and metal, aluminum, something like that. Um, this just helps prevent any bending or crimping right at the connection point of the cable. Now, this isn't a 4090, so bending the cable's not gonna burn your house down. 
but it can affect the longevity and the reliability of the cable. And if you think about something like DisplayPort 2.1 that has specs that should last for years, getting a good cable up front, something with a good life is really important. You can spend money now and not have to buy a new one for your next two or three builds. The real magic though, is what happens on the inside. In order to see that, we need to get these jackets off, we need to get the sleeving off, but first, in order to do that, we need to change into something a little more sciency. That's much better. Now let's take a look at some of these connectors. So for the Silkland cable, you can easily see you have a metal jacket on the outside, surrounded by an inner rubber layer, and then another metal jacket. Ooh, this is hot. Probably should have let this cool off before we really got into it. We want to take another one of these cables uh, with the rubber sheathing, and let's see exactly what's inside it, see if we get something similar. So already you can see the difference between two identically priced cables, one with a rubber plastic outer sheathing on the connector and one with a metal sheathing, where when you remove the metal sheathing from the Silkland cable, you have another rubber insulator followed by another outer metal jacket versus cutting off the insulator on this, you go straight into the actual connector itself, which is plastic insulated, and if we could get everything else off, straight into the foil wrapping. I'm not sure how well you guys can see that. Versus a little bit better quality cable that was the exact same price. We still have another layer of metal insulation to cut through. So let's go ahead and do that and see what's on the inside. So finally, after removing the second inner metal jacket, we finally get to the same uh, plastic wrap and connections that we see on the cheaper, cheaper in quality, I should say, not cheaper in price, rubber sleeved cable. Next, I want to take a look at the actual cables themselves. This is trash now. So another thing that's easy to notice, not only does it lack the extra outer metal shell on the connector, for the actual cable itself, there's the braiding on the better quality one before you get to the PVC, where on the cheaper cable, it's straight PVC and then down into the wires. I'm not sure how well you guys can see that. We're gonna take a blade and see if we can get a little bit deeper into this. So you can see about how much trouble I'm having getting through the outer sheathing and the braiding, just the difference in the quality of these cables. I'm gonna actually have to take the Dremel to try and get through the braiding. Now that we have that off, you can see there's basically an inner PVC jacket that is identical to the outer PVC jacket of the cheaper cable. Along with that, you also have a secondary aluminum foil layer wrapped around that, braided, another section of aluminum. And now we are finally to the inner cables, each of which are very well insulated. For the non-used ports, there's basically just string in there. But you do have all of your signal carrying cables are incredibly well insulated, wrapped. They're not just inside a aluminum outer shell on the connector. They are inside an aluminum outer shell on the connector, wrapped around an inner PVC layer, wrapped around another metal layer. Then you finally get to the connector. Then when you look at the cable itself, you have an outer braiding wrapped around an inner PVC, wrapped around another layer of 
braiding and insulation wrapped around another layer of foil versus your cheaper cables. We lost the cheaper cable. There it is. Versus your cheaper cable that you see was significantly easier for me to get into. Now on the inside, we do have the exact same braided inner insulation with another layer of foil and pretty much the same thing. So the inner components of the cable, the actual signal carrying parts of the cable are virtually identical between um, the cheaper made rubber sheath versus the higher end metal sheath. The big point that I want you guys to remember is that I did not pay any extra for these nicer braided cables with metal sheath connectors on the end versus what I paid for these cheaper plastic rubbery ones. They all fell in the exact same price range, which really makes you wonder if you're gonna buy these cables, what exactly are you paying for? A lot of times you're just paying for the name that's associated. Now, I'm not telling you to run out there and jump on Amazon and buy whatever the cheapest cable you can find is. Definitely don't buy one from one of those alphabet soup names that looks like it's just some random letters thrown together. So a lot of times what happens is uh, these cheaper companies that put out inferior products, they'll just make up a brand name, sell it on Amazon. Once they get enough bad reviews, they will continue to sell the same cable just under a different brand name. So definitely look for a brand you recognize. It doesn't need to be one of these major name, brand, name brands. You definitely don't want to pay over 250 ish a foot for your cable because like I said, guys, these all met the specs that they were rated for. All of these cables perform identically. So why would you overpay for a more expensive name brand? So that's it for this video, guys. I hope you see that there's not a ton of difference between which cable you get as long as it meets your rated specs. Um, we do plan to do some deeper testing in the future as funding allows us to do things like get these total phase cable testers and actually see what hits all of the rated specs and whether or not it hits them in the correct timings. Overall, I mean, yeah, conventional wisdom pretty much holds true. You wanna get a very inexpensive cable that is certified and meets the specs that you need. Hey guys, if you enjoyed that video, don't forget to check out one of these. Make sure you like, subscribe, check out some of our other content, and as always, thanks for watching.